The film opens with a documentary-style series of interviews that introduce the story. Twenty years prior, an alien ship arrives above Johannesburg, South Africa. It hovers above the city for three months without any contact. Eventually humans take the initiative and cut into the ship. They discover a large group of aliens who are malnourished and sick. The aliens are later assessed as being workers. With their leadership mysteriously missing it is hypothesized that a plague may have wiped out all of the leadership cast. Grainy footage shows part of the ship falling to Earth, but nobody has been able to find it, leaving the ship still hovering but inoperable. The creatures are given permission to leave their craft and stay on Earth but are housed in a squalid government camp consisting mostly of dilapidated one to two room shacks. The alien race's true name is never learned, they are primarily referred to as prawns, a derogatory term referring to the bottom feeding sea creature they resemble or, more rarely, non-humans. Overcrowding and militarization eventually turn the area into a slum known as District 9. A massive black market is set up between the aliens and a group of Nigerians primarily led by Mumbo, a paraplegic warlord. In addition to interspecies prostitution, the Nigerians exchange canned cat food for alien weapons, of which the cat food has an effect similar to catnip on the aliens. The present story takes place in 2010. Patience over the alien situation among the human population of Johannesburg has run out and control over them has been contracted to Multinational United, a private company that shows little regard for the alien's welfare. MNU's actual agenda is their interest in the alien's advanced weaponry, but its integration with alien biology makes it useless to humans. An MNU field operative named Wickes van der Merwe is tasked with moving 1.8 million aliens to a new camp, District 10, located 240 kilometers from Johannesburg, with help from private security forces working for MNU. MNU teams serving warrants for the relocation of the aliens find caches of contraband items, including weapons, in many alien shacks. Wickes himself oversees several inspections and is assisted by Kubis Venter, a belligerent MNU military operative whose tactics with the aliens are ruthless and cruel. In another shack, not far away, an alien named Christopher distills a mysterious black substance that has taken him 20 years to find the components for and stores it in a small black cylinder. While serving an eviction notice to Christopher and searching his shack, Wickes finds the cylinder which squirts its contents into his face. He becomes almost instantly nauseous and collects the device as evidence. Wickes returns to his office and grows increasingly ill throughout the day, the side effects of the black fluid becoming more prominent. He returns home that evening and collapses at a surprise party in his house. He is rushed to a hospital where a doctor discovers his left arm has metamorphosed into that of a prompts. Wickes is then taken into custody by MNU, the cylinder is confiscated, and a series of tests and experiments are performed on him. Most surprising to those studying him is that his DNA has been altered to the point that he can operate the alien's weapons with both his alien hand and human hand. The scientists discover that his DNA is currently in balance with the alien DNA, which is gradually transforming him completely into a prawn. With the permission of Wickes' ruthless father-in-law, they decide to harvest his body for biological material at this critical point to see if they can figure out how to get the same reaction in other human subjects later on. However, during the attempted vivisection, Wickes overpowers his captors and escapes, fleeing from MNU. Attempting to return home, he finds MNU agents already there. Making his way across the city, he is shocked when an all-points bulletin is put out for his capture, with doctored footage showing him having interacted with the aliens in an unsavory way. With nowhere else to turn to, Wickes start eating thrown-away foods, stealing people's clothes, and to let his wife know that he is safe, he tried calling his friends but none of them could help. He then finds refuge in District 9. Wickes returns to Christopher's rundown shack where he finds the alien's small son. It is hinted that Christopher might be a surviving member of the prawn leadership cast, as he shows much more knowledge of how alien technology works, possesses or at least found the command module, and interacts with MNU officials more articulately than other aliens. Looking around inside the shack, Wickes is shocked to find that something has been hidden under the shack, is the mothership's command module. Christopher explains to Wickes that the cylinder he took was the power source that could power the module to return to the ship where the prawn explains there would be technology to reverse the man's current mutation. So, the two prepare to go to the MNU headquarters to bring back the liquid. Wickes goes to the gang leader, Mumbo, to buy some weapons for their quest. 
However, Mumba wants to cut off Wikus's alien arm to eat it. The Nigerians believe that eating alien body parts will get rid of diseases according to a concept called muti. Before they can cut his arms, Wikus gets his hands on an alien weapon and attacks the gang. With the help of it, he collects all other weapons and flees from there. Christopher and Wikus then attack the MNU headquarters. Because of the weapons, they manage to wipe out most of the lab within minutes. The colonel who is in charge of MNU's security and has been tasked to capture Wikus arrives with his squad. Wickus finally finds the liquid, but just then, Christopher finds his fellow alien in the lab. He had been experimented upon by humans. The soldiers get inside the lab and start firing at them. The two beat the walls and manage to flee from there. However, the police chopper follows their car to District 9. Christopher and Wickus are now in his shed, where Christopher reveals that he has to save his people first. Only then he will transform Wickus. Furious, Wickus knocks Christopher unconscious and powers up the ship himself. The MNU mercenaries target Wickus and destroy one of the command module's engines, causing it to crash land inside District 9. After Wickus is captured by MNU, a battle between the MNU mercenaries and Mumbo's gang breaks out. After a protracted firefight, the Nigerians capture Wickus. Just before Wickus' arm is chopped off, Christopher's son activates several systems in the mothership, including the autopilot routine of a mechanized battle suit. It slaughters Mumbo and his men after they fire on it. Wickus enters the alien walker battle suit, and after initially attempting to flee, returns and rescues Christopher. Armed with a lightning cannon, tracking missiles, and a high-powered machine gun, Wickus begins to fight the MNU men. After being knocked over by an anti-tank sniper round, he convinces Christopher to return to the shuttle without him, over Christopher's objections. Christopher promises Wickus that he will return in three years to repair his body. Christopher then boards the shuttle and activates a tractor beam which returns the command module to the mother ship. The mother ship powers up with a loud, rolling boom and flies off. On TV, humans cheer as the ship leaves Earth. Wickus' battle suit is hit in the back and the suit ejects him. Wickus, heavily wounded, begins dragging himself away from Kubis Venter, the sole survivor of an MNU squad, but is quickly caught. As he prepares to shoot Wickus, other prawns appear, attacking and dismembering Venter. The film concludes with another series of interviews and news broadcasts, providing human opinions on the events that unfolded. The aliens are successfully moved to District 10, which now has a population of 2.5 million, and is growing. One of Wicca's co-workers hacks MNU's database and publicly exposes their illegal genetic experiments. There are many differing theories on Wicca's fate. Some people believe that he either left on the mother ship, is in hiding, was captured by MNU or a government agency. Some interviewees hypothesize that the aliens are planning to return with a full army and declare war on humanity. An interview with Wickus' wife reveals a small metal rose was left on her doorstep. Wickus has earlier demonstrated his affection for his wife with similar handmade gifts. Her friends have told her that it could not have possibly been Wickus, but she appears unsure. In the final scene, an alien with a bandaged left arm is shown in a junkyard, fashioning a rose out of scrap metal. Please leave a comment below. And thanks for watching today's movie recap. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video and I will see you guys in the next one. For now, take care.